So the Avengers Infinity War movie is set to be released in 2018, but the question that's on everyone's mind is, is Thanos going to be the villain that the Marvel Universe has been asking for? And joining me here today to discuss Thanos is my good friend Devil Artemis, in which right now we're going to further discuss our ideas and further predicting on whether or not Thanos is going to be executed very well and being portrayed as the biggest and baddest villain that the Avengers have ever faced. Now, Devil Artemis, I do want to welcome you back to the channel. Now, you and I I are both Marvel fans and at heart we cannot wait for this film and having to look at the Avengers 1 and the Avengers 2 I think it definitely capitalized on a great story and it had really good villains we had Loki and Ultron but the fandom within Marvel has been complaining that there has been no villain that has been credible enough to appear on the scene to give the Avengers that definitive battle to give them you know the defying moment of having to push them to their breaking point now Thanos is rumored to be that villain in order to you know entirely obliterate the Avengers alongside the Guardians of the Galaxy so I wanted to get your take on the following question do you believe in your opinion that Thanos is going to indefinitely kill off either the majority of the Avengers or if not all of them going into the upcoming movie. Well, first, I want to thank you for having me on the channel, Alex. Uh, thank you a lot, bro. Always, um, man. But uh, I think really what's 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 going to end up happening is Thanos is probably going to end up taking out all the Avengers. And uh, I mean, I have two theories. I have a theory that either you could take out all the Avengers and there's going to be time manipulation um, or, or or something that's, that's going to bring all the Avengers back because there's just no way that they were going to be able to stand up to the Infinity Stones. We got glimpses of, of the amount of power that one stone alone has, which right. is, I think, you know, which is obviously the, the, the stone, the, the power stone, obviously that's, that's the best one, the best example that we got during the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Right. But I think Thanos is probably going to end up um, eliminating all the Avengers and uh, someone is going to have to take this, uh, stand up and do something about it um from the trailer we get to see tony stark that uh he was you know he was holding up spoiler alert he was holding up uh, peter parker and it seemed like peter was like suffering from a wound or something on the ground he was saying i'm sorry mr stark things like that like i, I feel i feel that um one by one the avengers are gonna fall and really for those of you who don't know who just are going into this completely blind these stones are insanely overpowered um if, if for those of you who haven't been kept caught up with the marvel movies um like the the blue stone the uh what's it called the mind gem the I mind think gem, that's yeah. what it, or or this i'm not sure i don't know if it's the mind gem or the space gem. well the the blue stone is one of, it's one of the gems um there's space mind reality power and time so, yeah that's there's five stones the space gem that's the blue one so this the space gem is the blue one that one is the cube from the Avengers movie. The, the uh, the, one, yeah. The, yeah, actually, the very first time that it does appear is in the Captain America movie where the Red Skull has it. It appears as a cube, but that is the blue gem. That is the very first Infinity Stone. Um, the one after that is the Mind Gem, and the Mind Gem is the yellow one, the, uh, the Mind Stone. That one is inside, uh, what's his name? The, Vision. the Android. Vision, exactly. That one's inside Vision. Uh, the next one is reality, and reality is the ether from Thor. So, dark World, yeah. Yeah, uh, the Dark World. That's what it was, not Ragnarok. Ragnarok is the new one. Uh, the Dark World. So the ether was the, is the one from the Dark World, and then we have the Power Stone, and the Power Stone is the one that you saw in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's the purple one, and then we have the Time Stone, which is the green one, and that one we saw in Doctor Strange. Right. Uh, oh, and we have the Soul. The Soul is the last one that we haven't seen. The the Soul Gem. The Soul Gem. That's the last one that we haven't seen. Not that I know of. I don't think that we've seen that one. So the, all those gems put together inside the Infinity Gauntlet, which is what Thanos has in his hand. For those of you guys who don't know that, um, you know, that is extremely overpowered. So with that weapon, he will definitely be able, with the amount of feats and accomplishments that, that he has in the comics, um, I, I mean, with, when those stones are put together, that's it. You know, Thanos basically controls reality itself. It's 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 amazing what he can do with the stones. But do you so I think don't that think... indefinitely he's going to kill off all the Avengers? Because for me, I I would want to see Thanos completely obliterate everybody. Just because I feel like the Avengers as a whole, they're very powerful. I mean, you have a demigod, you have Tony Stark, who's incredibly intelligent, you have the Hulk, who speaks for himself. You know, it's just very very you know a selective group of people that can do incredible things. But having to go up against Thanos, I feel in my opinion that 
they are going to be killed off. And, and very oddly enough, going back to the Avengers Age of Ultron movie when Tony Stark had that vision of all the Avengers having to be slaughtered, originally people thought, well, maybe this is the rightful doing of Ultron. But I think that with that, it ties into this and in seeing how the shield was broken, how Thor was, you know, killed off, how Hulk was pretty much impaled. We saw a very graphic vision and then we saw how Tony Stark looked out. And there was like this wormhole that was, you know, pretty much opened up by Earth and we saw all these creatures pretty much head towards that. So we understand that no, Thanos isn't really going into this with an army. He's going in there with a, sp uh, a selective group of uh, members that I believe are called the Children of Thanos. And they're going to be also uh, helping helping Thanos and, I, and what I assume to be gathering the stones. And I think that those specific characters aren't really going to be as credible as Thanos is uh, as an individual, but I, I also believe that going into this, Tony Stark may be the last one remaining, so I wanted to ask you, like, with Tony having to be one of the potential ones having to be the last one standing, even though in terms of, you know, sufficiency, he doesn't have any superpower, um, but having to correlate that to Age of Ultron's vision when he was the last one looking around, and even Captain America having to tell him, you could have prevented this, you could have saved us, do you think that in your opinion, Tony Stark might be the last one before he perishes or maybe something else is going to happen because this definitely ties into a potential Adam Warlock debut even though they haven't really confirmed him. What are your thoughts on Tony Stark having to potentially be the last one remaining because even having to go based off of the trailer slash teaser from the uh, previous reveal over at Comic Con, we saw how towards the end Tony Stark was the last one remaining. He looked up at Thanos before Thanos used the Infinity Gauntlet to grab the moon and throw it at everybody. So, do you think that you know Tony Stark is going to be the last one remaining before he comes up with a plan, or do you think that he, alongside everyone else, is going to is, is going to get slaughtered too? Well, I mean, I feel like Tony Stark being he probably won't be the la very very last person. I mean, I feel like those those there will still be other heroes around, but the issue with uh that i'm coming across when i'm trying to predict something from this movie is from from the trailer i couldn't really see it that well it looked like he only had one stone does it look like really they had one stone the, 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 I, i'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure i, mean, um, I thought, he had, I thought he it was just the blue in, stone in one of the scans like i mean he, uh, when, he, when he was walking he pretty much clenched his fist and if you pause it you get to see like these little um these little like bright lights on the gauntlet so i'm assuming he has them but even if he doesn't do you think one stone is enough? Just one stone can obliterate well, that, all of them? Well, that that's why I was I was I was saying because for what it looked like to me when he raised his hand to launch the rocks or the moon right, wherever right. he launched, it looked like it was shining blue. So I thought yeah. that he only yeah. had you know one stone. So I figured if he's only using one stone and he's kicking the ass, dear God have mercy if he gets his hands on four others uh, <laughs> on four other stones. Um, but yeah, Tony Stark. My problem with with uh, with this with the marvel cinematic universe is i feel the we the heroes are a lot weaker than their comic book counterparts okay and why, why does you feel that way well i mean when i look when i look at it i feel like from from the movies um they they have specific feats like let's take Sp spider-man for example right, right. spider-man uh for those of you who haven't seen spider-man homecoming spoiler alert spider-man was able to to not he didn't successfully do it he he was going to fail but he was holding together uh, a cruise ship or like a ferry it wasn't a cruise ship it was right. a ferry uh that was it was it was in new york and he was holding that together and the kids maybe 14 15 years old but then we have spider-man in the comics um who had done like crazier shit like uh i i i feel like he was just holding holding these webs um holding together this ferry all the webs were breaking nothing was going on it basically wasn't helping out it was iron man who saved the ferry and then in the in in the comics you know spider-man picks up a fucking truck and smashes green goblin to death Sorry. oh Spoiler yeah, no, alert, yeah he, he does he, he does, does incredible you know feats in the comics yeah, you're he, right. do, he does he does crazy shit you know he picks up a truck um well some will argue some will argue that the fact that he's a kid here maybe maybe you know, well the thing is take... I'm, I'm basing that feat off the ultimate spider-man yeah, comics yeah, yeah, and definitely. the ultimate spider-man is young is young he's like 16 years old he's He's 15, 16. He's a, he's a kid. Ultimate Spider-Man is a kid. My problem with what I'm saying is is that uh, the, I feel like the comics, the comic book variation of the characters are a lot better than their movie counterparts. Right. So the fact if you're going to keep Thanos at a comic book level and put him against characters that are not on that level, it's going to be an issue. It's going to be a slaughter fest. So that's why I'm thinking there has to be something that we don't know about that's going to that's basically going to help them because if Tony Stark had this vision that everybody dies, okay, 
everybody's dead and Tony Stark is the last one, there has to be something where he goes back in time and he fixes the whole, you know, right. civil uh, civil war thing that he did with, with Captain America. Right. There has to be some kind of time manipulation where Tony Stark fixes his mistakes. That's what I feel like is going to happen in the movie. I feel like everybody is going to die and Tony is going to blame himself because it's, instead of preparing for Thanos together, he was, they were all working a, apart from each other, you know, right, they were right. working against each other while all this was happening. And then we get to see Thanos, you know, finally pick up his Infinity Gauntlet in one of the, one of the movies. I forgot where I saw this. I it was actually uh, towards the end of Avengers Age of Ultron when he finally walked in. Right. And he said, fine, I'll right. do it myself. Yeah. Yeah. He, he says, fine, I'll do it myself. Yep. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's when we first see him put, throw on the gauntlet. So I'm pretty sure that uh, it's going to get really intense when he finally appears. But uh, like I said, time manipulation is what I think is going to happen after everybody dies. I think Tony Stark is probably going to do that. I, I think going back to what you just said with that, that's where I think Doctor Strange can definitely fit a and be a, a very crucial part in this because he is the one that can actually, you know, manipulate time and just, you know, do all sorts of incredible feats using that kind of ability. And I, I, I personally feel, in my opinion that this film is and possibly going to be the best superhero film of 2018 and i think me and you are both looking forward to that hopefully me and you can go both see it together because i, I think that this culminates 10 years worth of hard work from marvel and having to you know culminate everything and putting it all together i, I firmly believe that thanos in this film in my opinion towards the end he may have all of the infinity stones but i think that early on like you said he may actually only need one or two, but as uh, in specific, if he has the Mind Stone, because we we do understand that the Mind Stone is on Vision's head, so it's not really hard to you know claim that stone, especially when it's in the uh, the forehead of your, one of your enemies. So I, I personally feel like Vision is one is going to be one of the first ones to go. Why? Because yes, he is very overpowered, but having to look at the depth and scale. In the comics, we've seen Thanos grab him and literally rip that stone from his head. And then, you know, and that was the end of Vision. So I think that Vision would not be operational once that happens. And I, th I think that, in my opinion, he might be the first one to go alongside many other characters. Because as of right now, it's all building, especially with Thor Ragnarok having to come out and all the other movies, Black Panther. It's all going to culminate and tie into this film. And having to look at what you just said, I think that it may be the case early on. He may only in fact use one stone, maybe two stones. But let's not count out the uh, the minions that he has working for him, the children of Thanos, that are going to be going out to also recruit the stones and gather up the stones together, just so he can have all five. But uh, in terms of like solidity, in terms of like telling a defining story in this film, do you think that Thanos, by the end of the uh, of of the Avengers Infinity War film, do you feel? as if Thanos is going to be established as possibly the greatest villain to ever step foot on a Marvel movie on the big screen. The most powerful, maybe. The greatest? I wouldn't say so. Who, who would you um, say would be arguable to that in terms of being one of the greatest to be on the screen? We need to find out what Thanos' goal is in the movie. Destruction, bro. bro. <laughs> well, just to, if, if it is, if, yeah, if, listen, if his goal, if his character is just to destroy everything and he wants to erase the universe by snapping his fingers, he can do if you know he wants to do that whatever yeah he would tech he would technically be one of the best villains in the marvel cinematic universe and let's not forget oh. he has a fascination for death yeah oh yeah he does have a fascination for death yep. we're going for this and he is obsessed with death and whatever um you know we can definitely uh we can consider that if he wants to destroy the universe to impress her i mean if, if that's what they're gonna go for then I mean, to be honest, I still don't find that uh, making a, a great villain. The backstory, anyways. Right. His his, his uh, power of destruction, you know, the power that he has to be able to destroy, uh, definitely at the very top, you know, so far from the, from the MCU that we've right. seen. Uh, probably the strongest villain, period, with all the stones and everything. But um, I think, you know, there are better uh, character, character wise, better villains in um, the MCU. I mean, I enjoyed Ultron a lot. I liked his dialogues from the movies. Um, I even liked Vulture. Vulture from the Spider-Man movies. Oh yeah, sadistic as hell. Oh my God, sadistic. He was just a. He was just um, my favorite scene in the whole entire movie was when uh, Peter Parker dropped off. I don't know if you saw the movie. No, I did. did you yeah. See the movie? Yeah. When, when for those of you who saw it, for those of you who didn't, spoiler alert again. Um, when Peter dropped off uh, his daughter to the prom, and he sat in the car and he took the fucking gun out. Have 
<laughs> having a father daughter convers uh father father uh like son in law yeah yeah oh yeah yeah that that was crazy like that I was like holy shit like this guy's serious see Vulture doesn't care he was willing he was about to uh, kill Peter uh, or, or threaten to kill Peter and he knows this kid's like 14 15 years old he doesn't give a shit this guy has the mentality of a real villain yeah um, I, I feel like Thanos is doing all yeah he has all these cool powers and all this shit to do you know with the Infinity Stones and he's super fucking powerful but he's doing it for what to impress to impress a, a girl or to impress death like really like come on if that's what they're gonna go for cool you're strong awesome you're the strongest but you're not the coolest i mean i don't in terms of of your your motive you don't have the best motive i don't think his motive is the best i feel like you know this guy uh vulture you know he was doing this for his family and kind of also for himself for pride and and selfishness and shit like that right that's that that's the stuff that villains have they're selfish they don't care they're they're willing to kill anybody even a, a kid for own self benefit for money he was greedy trying to make money that's all he wanted he was just a money guy he's greedy so you know that's my opinion i think thanos yeah most powerful does he have the best motive no i don't think so i think that going into this um he i think he also reflects onto voltron's character possibly even to a greater extent because in the trailer he says you know fun's not something one considers when balancing the universe and then we see destruction and death and then he says well this brings a smile on my face and he's just very very sadistic and then he talks about you can run you can pray destiny will always find a way and then he you know he slaughters everybody and going back to peter parker again you know 14 15 year old boy in the film may be killed off by the exact same person with ease so i think that with this person you're right to an extent we don't know fully what his motives are his current motives is to gather up all the stones and further use that for his plans as to what it is we don't know um but we're definitely going to be touching up on part two to thanos possibly being killed off because there are different variations where he was killed off by drax in the comics and all sorts of stuff but i do want to say thank you so much for joining me and thank you all so much for watching myself and artemis want to know from you guys as to where you guys stand with thanos as a villain do you definitively feel like he might kill off all the avengers is he going to kill off a majority of them possibly half and then while the other half have to regroup and come up with a plan because i don't think entirely they're gonna base this movie on the comics or at least a specific issue i think that they may include their own twists to the overall storytelling of the narrative of the comics so i don't feel that i don't feel as if they're going to be basing the entire story based on one specific issue or issues uh but that's why that's what we me, me and artemis want to know your thoughts down below guys thank you all so much for watching guys if you guys don't know about devil artemis go ahead and check his channel out down below i'm gonna link his channel uh he covers various different things on his channel from reactions and gameplays to dragon ball and again guys if you guys are new to this channel don't forget to hit that subscribe button guys also turn on notifications that we guys can be notified whenever a video is posted onto this channel hashtag notification squad guys thank you all for watching and we'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below have a great day everybody peace